Today on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. For families looking for a boat designed to explore inshore and offshore waters with ease, we'll be taking a look at the Creval 26 Open. Performance wise, they're all fun to drive. This boat ran like a champ and powered with a 350 Mercury was also very economical. For those looking for an offshore battle wagon that doesn't lack any family features, we'll be looking at the Seafox 288 Commander. If you haven't ridden on the new ones, you need to. They have never stopped evolving. Every year, the hulls they bring us ride better. And for blue water anglers in search of a boat with 360 degree fishability and loads of comfort, we'll be taking a look at the Sea Chaser 30 HFC CC. I really appreciated this boat because the fisherman's happy on it and so is the family. All coming up on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. another episode of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Today we got three incredible boats and I can't wait to find out all about them. Rick? Yeah, I get to start. I, I, we got a new boat from an old friend. We've dealt with Creval 26s a few times through the years. This year they brought us the Creval 26 HBW, which stood for Hybrid Blue Water. It's always been a great hybrid boat, but it's been a very nice offshore boat. They made the changes necessary. It is a super, super competitor for still being in the bay and then being offshore. Wait till you check out the Sea Fox 288 Commander. Boy, I tell you, if you're a cruiser or an angler, you're gonna be happy on this boat because she does both. She was set up to fish, but I gotta tell you, that scallop seating up in the bow of that boat and the sun lounge up there, I was a happy camper all day. And last but not least, we're gonna take a look at the 30 hybrid fish and cruise from Sea Chaser. Now, if you guys remember the day we went on this boat, we were a little concerned about the wind that day, and I'm unfamiliar with a lot of the Sea Chaser line. I haven't spent a lot of time on them. I'll tell you one thing, this boat met the three foot seas that were waiting for us in the inlet, unbelievably strong. What a ride on this boat, and just impressive in a lot of ways. I think you're really gonna like it. It's what I love so much about this year. We got three totally unique, great new boats. Let's get rolling. When we return, our hosts take a look at a versatile boat designed for family fun and fishability, the Creval 26 Open. But first, let's join FS Boating Editor George Labonte as he gives tips on how to safely trailer your boat in this week's seminar segment. Having a trailer boat can greatly increase your possibilities when it comes to destination boating, but using a trailer can present a host of issues if that trailer is not maintained and kept road ready. Start by making sure all of your tires have plenty of tread light and are properly inflated. In addition, bringing along a spare with a pre-installed, pre-greased hub is never a bad idea. Carrying an adequate jack and the necessary tools required to complete a tire swap is important. Properly installed safety chains are a must and legally required. Also, be sure to have good quality tie-down straps for your boat and check them regularly for wear. Be sure to take the time to secure or remove any loose items in the boat that may blow out while you're traveling down the road. Following these few simple guidelines will ensure you a trouble-free trip to the water. This segment brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. An entirely new species of extreme predator is moving offshore. The Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO offshore outboard. Extreme big block thrust and power in the industry's first direct injection four stroke. Quiet, efficient, powerful, and proven Yamaha reliability. More than an outboard, it's a fully integrated power system. The all new Yamaha V8 XTO offshore. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts as they take a closer look at the Creval 26 Open. Representing the Bay Boat category, the Creval 26 Open has an overall length of 25 feet 6 inches, a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 400. Built for fishing along the mangroves or in blue water, she has a draft of 12 to 14 inches a dead rise of 16 degrees, 
a dry weight of 4,000 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 90 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts. Guys, we got a great day lined up here today. We're on the Creval 26 Hybrid Blue Water. You know, Rick, we love everything Creval brings us, and you know, today is no exception. As people have really moved this boat into the offshore arena, the boat is proving itself to be super efficient and a great blue water boat as well. So we're gonna get a chance today to do a little bit of fishing offshore and then take the family back inside and have a little bit of a picnic play kind of uh, activity day on the, on the sandbar. Yes, the gunnels are the perfect height to blue water fish. She's got outriggers, she's ready, she's laid out, but she only draws 14 inches of water. It turns around after an offshore day and it's ready to get skinny. I love the fact that the family is here today on the boat because what better way to show off the entire lifestyle of the boat? All right, well, I've got a great idea. Let's start by putting something in that coffin box. I'm ready to go fishing. You ready? Let's do it. When Creval Boats originally introduced their 26 open model, this was a boat that was designed to be a crossover boat that would take you inshore fishing and near coastal fishing with just a little bit of offshore fishing built into it. As a lot more boaters have used this boat, its usefulness in the blue water has become much more apparent and it made sense for Creval to build an addition of this boat that was tailored more towards people that want to spend a lot of time in the blue water. In the last few years, we've seen an explosion in what we call hybrids. At the top of this list has got to be the Creval 26. This is a new boat from a relatively new company, but boy, if they got this thing dialed in. I couldn't wait to take it offshore. You see dark fabric on a boat, you instantly think, oh man, that sun is gonna be beating down on that. They use a heat reflective material that really provides a cool feeling, especially on your skin, on the seat when you go to sit down. So I gotta say, this was a winner for me. All of Creval's boats are laid out with a very smart and stylish helm design. Now the 26 HBW is no different. Another thing about this boat is, performance-wise, they're all fun to drive. This boat ran like a champ and powered with a 350 Mercury was also very economical. The boat jumped out of the hole, got us to 30 miles an hour cruising almost instantly, and gave us three miles per gallon fuel efficiency, which is remarkable. Chad Garros has been with us for a number of years with Cravalli. He's a great guy, and we put him on his first sailfish. And let me tell you, this fish was hot, and he was running 360s around the boat. Even though the boat is loaded with features, it's completely uncluttered. Handling this fish from that boat was a snap. Not having the standard U-shaped seating up on the boat doesn't mean you're not comfortable. They use the coffin box as a full sun lounge with a removable backrest, and it had cushioning. Very comfortable. The Garros always fish together as a family, and that is really a neat thing. And let me tell you, having their boys running up and down the decks of those boats that sea deck was great on their feet. It was easy to clean up the blood off of it, and it just made the day more comfortable for everybody. The stern seating today, you have a 40-inch bench seat, perfect for two. And then you fold that down, it rests between two live wells, so you have an open casting platform for fishing. You know, even though this Creval 26 made a great family boat, it certainly wasn't short on fishing features. The tackle station behind the helm was excellent. The cutting board is right there, easy to rinse off. We're able to rig baits and get them out. There wasn't much we couldn't do with this boat from offshore or once we brought it back inshore. They had a sunshade for the stern and the bow. It literally covers the entire boat. I could not have been happier, especially having kids. It made it for such a great day on the water where we could actually stay out even longer. Guys, I love it when a plan comes together. We had a plan today for the Creval 26 HBW, and it worked out to a charm. Why is that, Rick? They were convinced that this boat would perform perfectly offshore, and it did. Think about it, we had a full family on the boat, we had a hot sailfish going around, couldn't have gone any better. Today I jumped on at the sandbar and I set up lunch for everybody. Three coolers I got to work with today. You had a fish in the fish box, but I had drinks in this box, I had food in the other box, and when you're done for the day, everything you can lock up. Rods, you don't gotta carry them back to the hotel room. Wonderful locking system on this boat. I really got a chance to dig into the ride on this boat. And you know, like every Creval I've ever had the opportunity to run, it didn't disappoint me one bit. And you know, Creval recently started using a resin infusion process in their construction. And you can absolutely feel the difference in the ride on this boat. The boat rode like a champ. I mean, there's nothing to complain about on the ride of this boat. 
If you want a boat that's going to make a family happy between your blue water trips that you're going to thoroughly enjoy, the Creval 26 HBW has got to be on your list. When we return, our hosts examine a boat that combines performance, comfort, and fishability into a stylish package, the Seafox 288 Commander. This segment brought to you by Ingle, the best performance coolers on the market. Wake up early on your days off. Go on an adventure. Get out on the water. Here at Ingle, we live for these days. We think you should spend more time in nature let us help you enjoy it. For those that care about quality, who want to get out into the world with a confidence that their gear is going to stand up to the day's challenges, Ingle Coolers are built for you. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts as they take a closer look at the Seafox 288 Commander. Representing the 27 to 32 foot class in the center console category, the Seafox 288 Commander has an overall length of 28 feet, a beam of 9 feet 8 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 600. Built for open water performance, she has a draft of 18 inches, a dead rise of 20 degrees, a dry weight of 6,000 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 185 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts. Okay, team, we've had Sea Fox on the show before, but not since I've been here. I'm really excited to have him back. We're on the Sea Fox 288 Commander. What do you think? Man? I got excited the minute I walked down the dock. First off, nothing dampens the enthusiasm of an early morning fishing trip, and I immediately found out I can store all the tackle I need for whatever we run up against. Where are you going this morning? I don't care. This boat's ready to fish. All right, I know you guys are excited for fishing, but I'm actually really excited to go to the sandbar today. This boat looks like it's going to have a great setup for lunch. So if fishing gets slow, we can go to the sandbar early today. Ain't gonna happen, honey. Ain't gonna be no slow fishing today on the Sea Fox. Okay. The first order of business on the day we sailed with the 288 Commander from Sea Fox was getting bait. Now we got lucky on this day. We caught the bait guy getting ready to call it a day. And he was about to unload all the pilchers that he had. The two live wells that we have on this boat, a 45 and a 30, 75 gallons is a lot of capacity. Well, he buried us in pilchers in those live wells had no problem keeping up with that demand. One of the first things I always look at is the hole shot and how fast to plane on a boat. Now this boat jumped immediately out of the hole, got us up to a low 30s cruise speed at 3200 RPMs, which is pretty impressive in itself. And 1.7 to 1.8 mile per gallon economy is really, really good for a boat going this fast at this size. I was really impressed at the end of the ride when we got where we were going. We had covered quite a bit of water running offshore and every one of the baits was doing really, really well when we got there, and here's the reason why. The Sea Fox 288's wells are pressurized. All right, that means that the water doesn't slosh around while you're running. Turned out to be a huge factor when we slowed down, the baits still look like a million bucks. We could see through the aquarium windows in them and keep track of how many baits we were taking out of each well, a very well thought out live bait fishing system. George, I really kind of like the way she's laying out here. I like the boat's attitude. We're, we're not rolling. We're laying in the trough. How do you like the drift? Stability wise, it's great. You know what? That brings up an interesting point. You know, a lot of center console designs, Rick, are really kind of laid out to where you're always going to find yourself drifting down sea. When I say down sea, it wants to take a downhill tack and that's going to bring all your drift lines back behind the boat. Well, this boat, by trimming the motors up, it's easy enough for us to get in the trough and we can actually manipulate our angle just by adding a little trim down, put some of the motor in the water, it'll turn the boat one way or another, and really find the sweet spot there. It's very comfortable. God, I tell you what, I could build every kind of leader I could think of trying to get a fish to bite because of Sea Fox's tackle center. It's right there in the cockpit where I want to be anyway. I could drop the door to it. Here's every leader spool you'll ever want. Here's trays for every hook, every rig, every lure, right there in front of you. You never left the pit. So what was special about this Sea Fox to me was the entire bow area. Not only did we have great bow seating, we also had an easy access to a table to set up for lunch. Plenty of room to move around this table. You know when you go to a restaurant and you're in a booth and you feel a little squished? You didn't feel that way at all. They really did a good design with the table and the seating around it. But another great feature that I want to just step on real quick is the lounge seating. There was storage under it, and this tells you how big it is. I had my entire Yeti cooler in there, 
my dive bag, my beach bag, everything I needed for the day actually fit in that compartment right up at the bow. I could not ask for a better setup. Every year, all your boat builders really are getting better at creature comforts and family features. Well, Seafox took it to a new level. The aft facing scallop seating they had up in the bow and the bow facing seating that they had made it possible for Lori and I to sit all the way up front and be very comfortable on a ride home. So I was super surprised when I opened up the console today. There was six feet of headroom inside the console. Not only that, but we had a full head and sink. Seafox has been around a long time. They've been building boats for decades. And let me tell you something, if you haven't ridden on the new ones, you need to. They have never stopped evolving. Every year, the hulls they bring us ride better. If you haven't checked out the Seafox 288 Commander, take a ride soon. Man, that was a tough day of fishing. I tell you what, it's our fault. The boat certainly did its part. This boat is laid out perfectly for multiple kinds of fishing. You know what, guys, the fishing was bad but I gotta tell you, 10 hours on this boat today, every time I turned my head, I found another feature. And I said, man, they utilized every bit of this boat. They sure did, Lori. You know what? We had tough conditions, Rick, you're right. I mean, we had cold water, we had south tide. The fishing was really disappointing. It was about 100 degrees out. That was disappointing too, but you know, the one thing that didn't disappoint me, this Seafox 288 Commander, it definitely did its part today. When we come back, our hosts step aboard a boat designed for the serious offshore angler, the Sea Chaser 30 HFC CC. This segment brought to you by Two Rivers Boat Works. Exceptional design, quality, and craftsmanship. Dreaming of transforming your boat into the envy of the fleet? The experts at Two Rivers Boat Works are dedicated to customizing your boat to your specific needs and personality. Specializing in fiberglass and composites repair, professional painting, systems installation, and more. Founded by boating enthusiasts, we understand the enjoyment of being on the water, offering exceptional design, craftsmanship, and quality so you can spend more time on the water than dreaming about it. Visit our facility in Stewart, Florida and turn your boating dreams into reality. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts as they check out the Sea Chaser 30 HFC CC. Representing the 27 to 32 foot class in the center console category, the Sea Chaser 30 HFC CC has an overall length of 30 feet 3 inches a beam of 9 feet 6 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 700. Engineered for serious offshore fishing, she has a draft of 20 inches, a dead rise of 20 degrees, a dry weight of 6,183 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 237 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts. New from Sea Chaser this year, a step up from their 27 hybrid fishing cruise model is their new 30 HFC. Now we shot this sea chaser late in the season and our filming schedule took us out of the comfort zone of the calm weather we normally have in the summer into the time of year where the weather gets a little dicey. On the day we filmed on this boat, it was breezy and I was a little concerned with what we were up against, okay? Any concerns I had over the weather were quickly put to rest when we cleared the inlet down at Lighthouse Point on this boat that day, the boat immediately sprang to life. This sea chaser features what they call a quick high lift step design. This is a 30 foot boat with a nine and a half foot beam and probably just the right amount of proportions for the weather that we encountered. This high lift step got us up out of the water and through that inlet without any issues. And frankly, I was really surprised how dry and how soft this boat ran. I ran it hard into a head sea, beam sea, following sea, quarter and sea, everything I could. Despite all my efforts, I never one time took a wave above the rub rail into the boat. Nothing impresses me more on a boat than real estate. I want a lot of room. Some boats just fish bigger than they are. We kept having to ask ourselves all day long, is this, is this really a 30? Because it felt like a bigger boat. It rode like a bigger boat, and we had all the room we needed. First off, the T-top supports. They come into the console. They don't go down to the deck. That means you've got a lot more room to pass on each side of the console, which incidentally was a perfect size console for that boat. But go forward just a little bit. That seat that is not being used 90% of the day, it folds down out of the way whenever somebody's not sitting there. Good, solid ideas to give you more fishing room. Walking up to this boat today, I realized this is a hardcore fishing boat, but they didn't leave the family out of it. And that started off with all that bow seating. 
I was extremely comfortable, and that was due to the fact that these backrests were built into the bow area. They were not removable, which I prefer because it made me feel extremely safe and secure. There's also a removable table on this boat, which is great if you wanted to set up for lunch at the sandbar. The hybrid fish and cruise line from Sea Chaser, and especially this 30-foot model, are going to enable a family to utilize the boat in a bunch of different ways. Not just fishing, but water sports like pulling people behind it on a tube or diving, just cruising around on the Intracoastal. It's a multi-use boat for a family. Now, one of the things that stands out about this line is the amount of luxury features that the boat comes with as a standard option. These things are features that you're going to find on a boat that are typically a luxury upgrade. Among these features, you're gonna find a powder-coated low-profile bow rail, 16 stainless gunnel-mounted rod holders, and six illuminated stainless steel cup holders. Now, it's not just small trim items. The boat also features an electric flush head in the console and an anchor windlass system, also standard equipment. The LED illuminated powder-coated T-top on this boat also comes loaded with an Infinity Bluetooth audio system with eight speakers. Living in Florida, we all know the sun is brutal. And I really like an oversized T-top, and this Sea Chaser 30cc had it. Keep me out of the sun. The seat in front of the console is always a stationary seat. This one actually folded down, so it's out of the way. Let me tell you something else they did that I thought was really cool. The backrests up in the bow seating held tackle trays way out of the way, but they're available in case you want to change the type of fishing you're doing during the day. No room taken up, more tackle storage. Good idea. It was hard to find any place in this boat that you couldn't reach a tackle train. They had them from bow to stern, strategically placed, out of the way, but there when you need them. For a 30-foot boat, this boat felt like it was 40 feet. And I think it's because the stern, the seating folded into the boat, which I love because it really opens up the platform. But what's great about it is you had two separate bench seating. So you don't have to fold the entire thing out. If you just have one or two people that want to relax, you can just fold one out. This thing had a great live well in the rocket launcher, had another one on the transom. That means blue runners in one well and sardines in the other, depending on what kind of fish you've got your sights on. A boat of this quality and this size would never miss having a side door and they've got to find one makes it so much easier for people to step on and off the boat at the dock. And when you get a fish too big to lift over the gunnel, not a problem, slide him right on in. They've got an index fish box up front that I could lay down in and take a nap. When that big tuna or wahoo of a lifetime comes along, believe me, you've got room to keep him iced down. This boat armed with all the features that they're building into their standard version of it sure makes the decision to buy a boat a lot easier and a lot less things to wonder about and worry about. This boat's ready to go the moment you pick it up. Hey listen, if you'd like any information about the three boats you saw today or any boat you see on Best Boat, visit us at floridasportsman.com. Or we'll see you on the next episode of Florida Sportsman Best Boat.